Hello and welcome to Roving Report, a program that looks at the Northeast in all its dimension and brings you the changing mood and tenor of the region in all its colors. I'm your host, Lumpen Vishum, and the highlights of today's program are Experts discuss growing threat of Maoism in the Northeast. Construction work on railway line from Juribam to Tupul in Manipur in full swing. Security tightened along Assam Arunachal border to maintain peace. And Shumang Leela Festival in Imphal attracts large crowds. The threat of Maoists in the northeastern region is real and worrisome. Recently, experts discussed the issue at a seminar in Guwahati hosted by the Center for Development and Peace Studies. A report. Responding to the Maoist spread in India's northeast was the title of a seminar organized by Guwahati-based think tank, the Center for Development and Peace Studies. Members of the civil society, government officials, journalists and NGOs shared their views about the challenge Maoists have been posing in the region. It is evident that Maoists have set up base in Upper Assam, close to Arunachal border, and are working closely with the Northeast-based insurgent outfits. Maoists have just uh, opened shop in the northeastern region. We don't know what are their linkages as just. We don't know uh, how much of an ideology they have. We are trying to understand the problem. Now we are at a stage, our center, CDPS, we are trying to understand uh, the Maoist problem, and therefore we are engaged in this exercise of this seminar. The peace interlocutor for Assam, PC Haldar, said the presence of Maoists in the northeast has the potential to create serious strategic security complications. He urged the security establishments to take the attempts by the Maoists to consolidate themselves in the area seriously while planning a strategy to tackle them. Any ideology that has violence as its creed is injurious. And in this uh, region where uh, militancy, armed militancy has already uh, created a lot of uh, damage. We should be wary of any violence, particularly those violence which, which are used as instruments of political persuasion. The Maoists have close links with anti-talk faction of NDFB and Alpha to seek their help in procuring arms and strengthen the Kada base. Experts believe the spread of Maoism to the Northeast region has added a new security dimension to the volatile region. Moving on, the Northeastern states have been witnessing a rapid growth in rural and urban areas, especially with the implementation of several government-run schemes. Let's focus on the changing scenario in the region with a new segment, Ripples. The government has been consistently trying to develop infrastructure and facilitate better connectivity in the northeastern region. In spite of frequent disturbances and natural calamities, the process of constructing the railway line from Juripam to Tupul, which has been further extended to Limphal, is in full swing. We have a report. Work on the rail project connecting Manipur's Jiribam subdivision and Tupul in Tamenglong district near Imphal is in full swing. It is expected to be completed within three years at an estimated cost of around 4,445 crores. A team of officials recently inspected the tunnels being constructed as part of the project. A total of 107 minor bridges, 7 major bridges and 3 road over bridges and 2 road under bridges have been constructed so far. 4 out of the 34 tunnels have also been completed. The railway bridge being constructed at Kumji village would also be the world's highest railway bridge. June 2015, I don't target. But everything goes well. When we go, any disturbance can get locked up. If you want to work at the end of the day, you can get the Jiribam Tupul railway line was included in the 2003 2004 budget by the central government in view of its look east policy. 
The project being executed by the North East Frontier Railway has also been extended to Imphal and is targeted for completion by 2018. The government also plans to extend the line up to the border town of Murray to connect the region with Myanmar and other Southeast Asian countries. The improvement in connectivity will facilitate greater socio-economic development in the region. Transportation, high tariko. Transportation, communication. So many things are there. Because if you want to buy bedu, we get to any of those levels. Railway, high business, railway lines, in Imphal, you can see. So what about the goodam? Ne, that one. So what about the goodam? We get to the point. We get to the point. Hang. So many things are there. Railway, hang. There are many things. So many things are there. Because we think about talking and going to collect. Better connectivity will give a fillip to the tourism industry of the region and it will also speed up industrialization. It will also enhance trade relationships and people-to-people -people contact with neighboring and ASEAN countries. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. A delegation of Northeastern students led by Minister of State for Minority Affairs, Ninong Ering met the Union Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde recently and demanded a judicial inquiry into the death of a student from Arunachal Pradesh in Delhi. 19-year-old Nido Tanyam died on January 30th after being allegedly beaten up by local shopkeepers. The Home Ministry has agreed to a magisterial probe into the death. It has also agreed to set up a committee to look into the situation of the northeastern students in Delhi. The incident sparked protests all across the country. Police has arrested three people for their involvement in the killing. The commander-in-chief of the anti-dog faction of Ulfa, Paresh Barua, was recently handed down death penalty by a special court in Bangladesh. Barua was among the 14 people awarded death sentence for their involvement in the 2004 Chittagong arms smuggling case. A huge quantity of arms and ammunition reportedly meant for Barua-led Ulfa was seized on April 2004 from Chittagong when they were being loaded up onto 10 trucks. Popular Naga folk singer Guru Ruben Mashangwa along with Imphal talkie singer Sachida Nanda Angom recently launched a musical campaign for change under the theme Winning Peace Together. The event was organized at the conference hall of Tribal Research Institute in collaboration with Change Support Group, Folk Art and Cultural Guild Manipur. A large crowd gathered to enjoy the enthralling music. A theatre group from Jorhat Replica has started a month-long HIV-AIDS awareness campaign through street plays in Saringia village. Through the plays, the group has been making people aware of the dangers of the disease as well as asking them not to show discrimination towards the affected people. The group also plans to cover the remote areas of Siv Sagar district. A protest demonstration was recently staged at Tera Lukram, Lirak Kethil against the hurling of a bomb at the residence of one Salam Rupachandra. The hand grenade was found lying at the entrance gate of the superintendent engineer in the morning. The women folk of the locality condemn frequent attacks on civilians that have created a fierce psychosis. Assam Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi along with the 14th Dalai Lama recently inaugurated the first ever four-day long Tibetan festival at Kalakshetra in Guwahati. Cultural troops from Bhutan, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh performed on the occasion. Stalls showcasing Tibetan art and culture, medicinal food, handicrafts and books were also put up. The Union Ministry of Home Affairs has deployed a central police force along the Assam-Arunachal border following the killing of 10 people over a land dispute. It is believed that the locals were provoked by insurgent outfits to claim the disputed land. We have a report. 
In January 29, armed people from Arunachal Pradesh raided a village in Assam's Sonitpur district and gunned down 10 people and injured many. It was believed to be a borderland dispute. However, intelligence inputs reveal that assailants were provoked by Maoists or some other local militant outfit to create instability in the area. कोशिश कर सकते हैं उस इलाके में आने की हो सकता है कोई और भी ग्रुप इमर्ज करके आ जाए कि हम आपको प्रोटेक्ट करेंगे आप हमें रहने दीजिए सो एनीथिंग इज पॉसिबल वी आर कीपिंग आवर फिंगर्स क्रॉस्ड वी आर स्टडीइंग द सिचुएशन एंड वी हैव टू बी एक्सट्रीमली केयरफुल इन द स्टेप्स वी टेक इन फ्यूचर बिकॉज़ इट विल आल्सो इन्वॉल्व पीपल ऑन बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द इंटरस्टेट बॉर्डर a battalion of Shashastra Seema Bal is patrolling the interstate border between Bhalakpong in Arunachal Pradesh and Bhairabakunda in Assam along India's border with Bhutan to curb the movement of militants. The forces will be deployed till the Supreme Court appointed commission headed by retired High Court Judge Tarun Chatterjee submits its report to define boundaries of the two states in dispute since 1951. The chief ministers of Arunachal Pradesh and Assam have condemned the incident and have ordered an inquiry. As the incident is highly condemnable, I convened a high-level meeting with the chief secretary, DGP and home commissioner last night and also this morning and have directed to ensure every possible steps to defuse the tension prevailing in the disputed area. I am an action plan the police outpost, police presence, security force or presence, army level, paramilitary force or level, army tank or level, Jugazu Kori, Kiki Bivasta Lole, Jate, and Ed Honor, Hazana, Bobichot and Ahoy, Tarkane, Ami Hokoni Blavivasta Lolo in the Degia Oise. The insurgents are trying to use the Behali Reserve Forest in Assam as a safe haven and are trying to mislead the security agencies by creating border conflicts. However, the agencies understand the modus operandi of these outfits and are ensuring that they cannot take any advantage of the situation. Ethnic clashes between militant outfits continue to affect common people in the Northeast. Fed up with constant attempts to terrorize and divide people, the Rengma Nagas in Assam recently hit the streets to protest against the killings by Kabi militants. A report. Hundreds of people from the Rengma Naga community took to the streets in Guwahati to protest against the killing of their people by Kabi militants. Most protesters were victims of the recent clashes in Karbi Anglong, which forced them to leave their villages. They are now demanding a safe and peaceful life. We to want to be safe, but our Karbi Liberation Party, the Tiger Force, is saying that we are going to harass the people with the public. And we don't want to be safe. We have been burning our house and we have been burning our house. We have been burning our house and we have been burning our house. We have been burning our house and we have been burning our house. What will we eat and how will we live? The Rengma Nagas have been residing in Karbi Anglong for a long time. However, clashes between various ethnic militant outfits have created a fear psychosis among the people. Since December 27, as many as 2,000 people in the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council have been displaced from their homes as a result of clashes between the Karbi People's Liberation Tigers and the Rengma Naga Hills Protection Force. While a majority has returned to their homes, some are still seeking shelter in the relief camps. There is no dearth of sporting talent in the northeastern region. We take you to Agra, where the National Schools Gymnastic Championship brought together children from all over the country, including those from Manipur. 
A group of 19 students from Manipur were in Agra recently to take part in the 59th National School Gymnastics Championship in both the boys and girls categories. Over 1,000 athletes from all over the country participated in the five-day-long championship held at the Eklavia Stadium. The young boys and girls from Manipur put up an impressive performance in the under-14 category. Manipur, Tarapura and Arasan. Three of our northern and eastern states. And three of the kids have come. And the kids are feeling their own feelings of government. They are interacting with the kids. They are enjoying the food here. And the kids who are coming to play in the game, they are trying to learn from them. In which we had the transactions of our both, the transactions of our both, the communication gap, the students were happy to get a chance to interact with children from all over the country. Events like this provide a platform to people from different parts of the country to interact and understand each other's culture, thereby promoting national integration. Performing arts are an integral part of the cultural heritage of Manipur. The state has a rich theatre tradition. One theatre form is Shumang Leela. It is considered to be one of the oldest theatre forms in India and still garners great response from the public. Take a look. These artists are part of the 11th Khumhi Shumang Leela festival held recently at Ibo Yaima Shumang Leela Shang Lane. The seven-day-long event, organized by the Manipur State Shumang Leela Council, aimed to promote and preserve the indigenous courtyard theatre form. Altogether, 13 Shumang Leela organizations participated in the festival and staged various plays. The basic aim and the objective for organizing this kind of festival is to make, to enable to bring the competent professional Shumang Leela groups in our region. Shumang Leela, an open-air theatre form, is widely popular across Manipur and besides entertainment, it also highlights issues of social concern. What is significant about Shumang Leela is that it is performed either exclusively by male or female artists. Visitors mostly sit on elevated ground surrounding the theatre court from all sides. Yeah, <laughs> It is essential to provide artists such platforms which allow them to showcase their talent as well as facilitate the preservation of age-old folk traditions. With that, we've come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. I'm your host, Limpim, signing off. Do send in your feedback and suggestions to roving at ANIN.com. Goodbye and see you next week.